Hey friends, and welcome to a very special English worship online. My name is Vanessa, your host, and I'm so happy that you're here to celebrate Lauren's last week. Because it's her last week, we want to make sure that today is extra interactive. So make sure that you go in the chat and say hello and say what's up and say where you're uh, watching from and how much you're going to miss Lauren. We also want to say thank you for being so generous throughout this entire pandemic. And if you would like to give online, you can do so here at Mandiri or Bechea. So as we're getting ready to worship, get hyped up, get ready to experience God in an awesome way. Let's go. Welcome to English Worship. I'm Pastor Jamie, and it's great to see, see you here. Well, actually, I can't see you, but it's great to know that you're online with us. So we're so glad that you're joining us. Hey, and today is a special day here at English Worship. It's Lauren's last day with us. That's right. We've been talking about it for, a, for a, this last month. Lauren, who's been serving here at English Worship for the last seven years, is heading back to America. So we want to celebrate her, but also we want to hear from God and what he is wanting to say to us. So let's open up our worship service with a word of prayer. Would you pray with me? Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness, and we just want to celebrate the ministry of Lauren of uh, these past seven years, but more than anything, we want to see your name lifted high, so we commit this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone says, amen. Let's worship together. Rise, my soul, remember this. Took my sin and he buried it. No longer I who live. Now Jesus lives in me. For I was dead in sin, but I woke up to see the light. Hold on me So where, oh there Where is your sin? No longer I who live Now Jesus lives in me For I was dead in sin But I woke up to see the light is for your glory oh all of this for your glory oh all of this for your glory oh all of this for your glory Oh, God. 
Amen. Hey, one of the things, or actually the three of the things that we really value here at English Worship is this, that we are charismatic, Christ-centered, and a community. And so we, we really believe that those things are our are core values of what we want to be. That, man, we want to be charismatic, meaning what happened in the Bible can still happen today. Christ-centered, that meant Jesus is at the middle, at the center of it all, and then all of our spiritual, our spiritual growth happens in the context of community. And we want to see that happen now during our time of singing. That man, if you've got a, a need in your life, and you need someone to pray with, that, that you don't have to carry that burden alone, so, man, our staff is online to pray with you. If you click the, the live prayer button during our worship time, man, someone will be there to pray with you. If you direct message us on, on Instagram, uh, man, someone is right there to pray with you. That you're in community believing that God still works today through Jesus. So as we worship the Lord together, man, let's bring our needs to the Lord and see how he answers our prayers. Let's do that now. In your presence, Lord, in your 
your presence only a moment to live this life like shooting stars burning up the night till heaven's open and we arrive in your presence lord in your presence only a moment only a moment to live this life like shooting stars burning up the night till heaven's open and we arrive in your presence lord in your presence let our voices rise all oh, creation cries singing out an endless hallelujah from this moment on join with heaven's song singing out an endless hallelujah there's nothing better there's nothing better nothing better than this right now now there's nothing better there's nothing better there's nothing better than this right now a word you singing over me you have been so so good to me for I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so your foe, 
Still your love fought for me. Yes, it did, God. For you have been so, so good to me. Thank you, Jesus. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. so kind to me oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God oh it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves the 99 and I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it still you yourself away oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, no lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. You won't kick down, lie, you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie, you won't tear down, coming after me. And all the overwhelming, never Reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down Fights till I'm found Peace to night and night But I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away everything for us that you would give everything to make it right to make a way for us to be with you that you would send your son your only son whom you love to make a way for us it's overwhelming to think about that kind of love and sacrifice we thank you Jesus we thank you father we thank you Holy Spirit Thank you. In your powerful name, 
We pray all of this. Amen. Amen. Hello, my name is Tasha, and I'm Pastor Jamie's wife. If you've joined us for English worship, maybe you've seen me around, but I'm usually not up front because that's Jamie's job. This being Lauren's last week, I wanted to share a little bit about her, so I've written down a few things to share. Lauren has been with us since 2013, and it's been a delight to welcome her into our ministry and home. We bless her as she leaves Indonesia for her next adventure, but also sad to know that she won't be here anymore. When I think back on all my experiences with Lauren, I can think of one trip in particular that was mem memorable. It was an uncomfortable yet fun trip to the Maluku Islands. We experienced eating papeda soup together with dozens of village people watching us to see what we thought of it. We ate enough papeda for a lifetime during that trip. During the trip, we traveled on all night ferries, slept in village homes, did many services in the villages beyond villages, ate jungle cat, dressed up as clowns, bathed in oceans, rivers, and ponds. The funniest part of the trip for me was a moment with Lauren. We just spent the night in a village home, and it was time to mandi. We walked about five minutes with a pastor's wife to a natural spring where the community ladies would bathe, wash laundry, and do uh, the dishes. When we arrived, there was already a few ladies there doing their laundry in the quiet small pond. The water was naturally cold, so I was slowly getting into it. Then comes Lauren running past me, and she jumps into the water with a big splash. It was a cannonball into the water. The ladies doing laundry and I were so surprised when we were splashed by the water. I think it gave the village ladies something to talk about all that week. One of the things that I appreciate about Lauren is her heart to share Jesus with others. There have been very few people that have worked with us that have had such a passion to share about Jesus with someone who's never heard it before. Some of, some of my favorite times with Lauren were when she came over and shared about a conversation or experience that she just had. It was great to listen to her excitement about what God was doing through her. One of the unique things about her stories is how she would pray and ask God to lead her. And then she would intentionally put herself in an uncomfortable situation and let God do the work. She would challenge herself to be uncomfortable for Jesus and talk to someone, even when it would have been easier just to stay quiet. I love it that she made a lunch out by herself, an opportunity not just to play on her phone, but to meet somebody new. She would initiate a conversation with people she'd never met before because of her love for Jesus and her hope that others would know him too. It has been a great to rejoice with her when she's had a God moment with a student. It's been awesome to see her faithfully planting the seed of God's word in people's lives and hearts. Lauren is naturally a shy person, but I admire her uh, for not letting her shy character define who she is. During her time in Indonesia, she stepped out to be brave for Jesus and trusted that God would help her. I hope that there will be many others who will follow in Lauren's example, step out in faith, and share the hope of Jesus with someone who has never heard it before. Lauren, we pray for you in this next chapter of your life that you would still uh, live a life that is brave and uncomfortable for Jesus that you would grow in your heart for God, and that your passion to share Jesus with others would always challenge you to do hard things for Jesus. We love you, and we're going to miss you, Lauren. Hello, English worship. My name is Lauren, for those of you who don't know me. Uh, I'm the Lauren's last month Lauren. Uh, if you've been wondering who she is, that's me, and it's my last Sunday here, so I have wanted to be able to share a few things with you about my time in Indonesia. And so I first came in 2013, right after I graduated from college. And as I was reflecting on these last few years, it, it was cool to see how things have changed, how I have changed. 
um, that I could never have imagined being in this place where I am now. And I'm so thankful for all the memories uh, and the trips that we had together with many of you and the stories that we shared and getting to know you. Um, I'm sorry if I didn't get a chance to talk to you as much, um, but it was so thankful for just the friendship and how much you guys welcomed me. I don't know if I could have stayed as long in Indonesia if uh, you guys hadn't welcomed or accepted me as much as you have now. And that's one of the things that I've loved and admired about Indonesian culture and Indonesian people, that whenever people ask, what do I truly love most about Indonesia, it truly is all of you, um, that I do love the people the most. Okay, I have to pause. Okay. I wanted to share two things that I have learned from my time in Indonesia. And so first, um, the one thing I wanted to share is that I feel like I've learned more about God in doing than in just reading. That I have learned more about God as I've tried to explain Jesus to others, share what it means to be a follower of Jesus, and truly live out God's principles of loving people and loving God that I've learned a lot of things through books and many questions people ask me, I looked up in books or on the internet to share with them if I didn't know it. But there's just something different about doing something than just reading about it. That if you're looking to grow in your faith, um, start trying to share it with non-believers or start trying to help another believer grow in their faith or start trying uh, to apply the principles of love in your relationships with your family and with your friends and in those it's hardest for. Join a service team or join leadership. I guarantee you the Lord will grow you and you will learn so much. For this is what I have learned at my time in Indonesia. Because, for example, it's kind of like if you read a manual about building a Lamadi bookcase, that there's pictures of what parts go where, and you're like, yeah, that's cool, that's cool. But when you start actually building it, and you're like, which piece is this? You're like really reading the manual, really trying to understand it. That when you start to do something, all of a sudden it kind of seems more complicated than when you are actually just reading about it. But you actually learn more in the doing. And that's what I wanted to encourage you with, that I really felt like that when I came to Indonesia, that I wasn't really prepared for anything. I didn't feel like I knew a lot about God. Uh, I didn't feel like I was very good at sharing my faith or even being a leader, but I was just willing to go and willing to learn. And I think those are two important things, that it doesn't matter if you don't know everything before you say yes when God asks you to do something, because if you're willing to learn, God will teach you along the way. He won't leave you alone, and he will teach you how to love people and love God. That there were things that I didn't even realize I needed to learn until I came to the situation, and then I had to learn the skill or the knowledge of what it happened in that time. So don't be afraid if you don't know what to do or how to do or if you don't know everything, because you won't ever know everything. Uh, but just be willing to learn and to ask questions and work through trial and error, that testing what works and what doesn't work, that one mistake doesn't mean that you're a mistake. It just means that action wasn't right, it didn't work out, and you can try again. That God knows you won't get it right all the time, but he still chooses you and he chooses me. That he is faithful and he cares about you just as much as he cares about those who don't know you. And so I wanted to encourage you that if you want to grow in your faith, try doing something than just reading about it. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to share is just my favorite verse, um, because I don't often share it, and I did notice it when I was in Indonesia in 2015. It's from Exodus 14, 13 and verse 14. It's when the Israelites were leaving slavery in Egypt, but the king of Egypt changed his mind and started chasing them that Israel was stuck between the army and the Red Sea, and they started to panic, that freedom was almost there, but then slavery was also there, calling them back, that they had done everything they could do, and there was no more that they could do. They were just stuck. And the Lord speaks through Moses to the people in this time. It says, But Moses told the people, Don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. And so what happens next? 
the Lord parts the Red Sea, the Israels walk to safety, and the Lord fights the army for them, that he does everything. And I saw in these verses a reflection kind of of just my life and our lives when we're trapped in slavery or trapped in things that we want to grow in. We're stuck in bad habits. And we kind of feel helpless sometimes. We feel stuck between an army that's calling us to slavery and this Red Sea that's blocking our way to freedom. And so that day I came across these verses, I felt stuck. Uh, and I realized I had my mindset all wrong, that no matter how hard I tried, I could never set myself free. Now, don't get me wrong. Disciplines and good habits, they're helpful. Don't stop them. <laughs> they guard us and build good things into our lives. But what I'm saying is that only Jesus can bring freedom, that freedom is a miracle from the Lord, that every victory you or I have had in our lives is only because of Jesus and not anything that we have done, that my strength is useless when it comes to my problems, that only Jesus' strength matters, and only his strength will help you and me. And I had to realize that I need Jesus, that you need Jesus, and I had to trust him for this change in my life, kind of just like I trusted him for my salvation. I didn't fight. I just needed Jesus, and I just needed to rest in him and pray and ask for his help. And so I had prayed before, but it had never been with this mindset before. And in that prayer time, I just felt something spiritually break, and I felt free. And I just wanted to encourage you, uh, if you're having this same struggle where you feel stuck, uh, to think about this mind sh mindset shift when it comes to your problems, that no matter how hard you discipline yourself or work towards your freedom, that only Jesus truly brings freedom, that he brings transformation in our life. Just like we trusted him for salvation, we can also trust him to transform us, that we need Jesus, and Jesus will fight for you. He will come rescue you, and you just have to be calm and let him rescue you. And so I just wanted to leave those two things with you, and I will miss you all very much, but I wanted to end with our blessing because I love it so much that the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you, that the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. God bless you guys. Hi, Laura, it's me, Tere. Do you remember when we first met? Actually, it simply brought me to meet you when I was full of anxiety and heavy burdens. We even didn't know each other, but you prayed for me so God would free me from the burdens I was carrying. A miracle happened on that day, I had my breakthrough and since then I started my life as a follower of Christ. I mean, as a real follower of Christ. But since I was new to faith, I felt going to church every Sunday and have core group meetings once a week were enough for me to grow in my spiritual life. But I was super quiet, I was so shy, I didn't really know how to talk with new people or talk in group of people so that's why in the past I didn't want to say anything and it was really hard for me to interact with people and that's why at the time after Sunday service is done or any event at the IEC has ended I immediately run to my place to avoid people because I didn't want to interact with them and I realized even though at the time I had my breakthrough but I was like a little baby that has so many things to learn in this world and I'm so happy a year after that you started approaching me which I was quite scared at first because you were trying to meet me every week but then I found out that you were trying to be my mentor which I never had a mentor before and you are my first mentor ever and as a wonderful mentor, you taught me about leadership, how to read the Bible, how to pray, how to have a confidence to talk in a group of people, and how to be open. And you're not only teaching me by words, but also through your actions. I can feel the love of God when you speak, when you show your kindness towards me or towards others and I felt I grow and change a lot because I have you as my mentor and I still cannot believe it last year I was a core group leader 
It's all because you always encourage me to serve the Lord whenever I have the opportunity. And I'm so sad that next month you're going to leave. But also I'm so excited for God for what God has in store for your beautiful life next. In the end, I just want to say thank you for being my wonderful mentor. And also you're not only a mentor for me. You also a sister in Christ and my best friend. I want to let you know that I love you so much and I thank you. And I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you a lot for giving me tons of love even until today. And I'm going to miss you a lot. And I don't want to say goodbye. Instead, I want to say see you later. And I love you. Sorry, hey. I've known Warren for six years. We met when I first moved to Indonesia back in 2014. And we got to know each other mainly because we were the only two girls on staff at that time. So we kind of had no choice. But if you know Lauren, you know that she likes to celebrate things. She likes to have fun. And she likes to make things special for other people. I remember when I first got here, about two weeks later, it was my birthday. And I didn't know anyone. I didn't have any friends. And Lauren planned a surprise birthday party for me. And we ended up having cake on the roof of my cos, and we were listening to music and dancing and playing the guitar. And it just made me feel so special. And that's something, Lauren, you're really good at. You're really good at making people feel known and cared for. So some of you may know this, but about a year and a half ago, I was in a motorbike accident. I had to get stitches in my face and my teeth were broken. And so I could only eat things through a straw. And this was two days before my birthday. And Lauren, she sat with me. She made me soup in the blender that she also ate through a straw so that I didn't feel alone. And she didn't try to make everything disappear. She didn't try to make me super happy. She just sat with me and she allowed me to be sad and she allowed me to process through what was happening. When I was in the Palu earthquake, she let me cry in her arms for 30 minutes when I got home and she was a friend that was just there. There's something so beautiful about a friend that is just there. A friend that will let you be who you are in the place where you are. Doesn't try to change you, doesn't try to fix everything, but shows you that somebody is with you. And Lauren, you are that friend. There's a spirit of peace and care that just follows you wherever you go. And so friend, I know that this new season is gonna be a little scary. There's uncertainty with new friends, a new place, a new job. But I know that the same God that has brought you these past seven years in Indonesia is gonna carry you through, through this next season. And that same spirit of peace and care that you have shown to us, you will continue to show to your new friends. I'm gonna miss you a lot, but I know that this new season is going to be like new life. It's going to be so exciting and so hard and so confusing, but so worth it. So thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being an awesome roommate. Thank you for being my walking buddy and my exercise coach, my tea provider. Thank you for sending me random cat videos on Instagram. I love you. And I know that this is going to be your best time yet. Love you, Guera. Hi, Lauren. Uh, I'm so thankful that I ever met you in my life. The memory that I always remember is you never give up to reach out to me eight years ago. You always invited me to have lunch or hang out together every week, and sometimes I never replied you back. And sometimes I said yes and bring my friend with me because I was not confident enough to meet you at that time. But I'm so thankful to God for the one who chased me. And after almost six months, I said yes to join Ka Alpha. From that moment, I never regret to decide to join Ka Alpha because 
you invite me. And from that on, God gives me path after path to follow him in this journey. The craziest memory with you is when we were in Balikpapan and some radical people spied on us because we hosted the team. That was scary, but it was awesome experience with you. It made me realize what we did as ministers, we are not always in the safest place, but God called us like a ship surrounded by the wolves. It's like the real adventure. Thank you so much to Bree Impact. You came far away from America and spent years here. Your hard work and sacrifice will not be wasted. It's kind of seeds you put in everyone's life. From single SMS, broad mission to young people's heart in Jogja and even in Indonesia. Hope to see you again in the future. And I'm so excited for what God called you to be and to do in America. Love you from Rachel, your friend. so much for being here at English Worship. We are so glad that you are with us for, I think this is our fourth month of English Worship online. Hey, I want to invite you to pray with us as we, um, as we consider when we are going to meet together live again here at the IEC. We want to use wisdom and caution, but we want to invite you to pray and be a part of of the, of the process. We're setting up the different protocols and procedures to make sure that this will be a safe place to come and worship when the time is right. So be aware of that, that we're praying and planning for a, for a time when we can worship together here at the IEC. But right now, we're glad that you are joining us here online. And this past week, I took a couple days off, and, and my wife and I and, and our two kids, we went to the beach, all right? We went to uh, Parang Tritis for a couple days. And then if you know anything about that beach, you know that there, it's, not a, it's not a swimming beach, right? You know, you go there, and, you know, we, uh, we, we had a great time. Time. We were flying kites. We we saw the horses and 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 um, and our kids. They wanted to play in the water. And so as as they started running towards the water, this guy he comes up to us and and he looked a little bit shady. He looked a little scary. He had, uh, he had like shaved head on the sides and tattoos on his face and just kind of freaky looking. And he and he comes up to my wife Tasha and he says, "Hey, uh, uh, be careful. Um, there are lots of." Ubur, ubur. All right, now that was a new vocabulary word for me, right? I don't, I don't know that kosa kata, all right? They didn't teach me that word in language school. So I'm like, ubur, ubur, what, what, what could that mean? And so, you know, I get out my phone and I, and I look it up. And do you know what that means in, in, in English, do you? It means jellyfish, all right? So he said that there are lots of ubur, there's lots of jellyfish all over the beach. And so, so we start looking at the sand, and there are literally thousands of jellyfish all over over the beach. I mean, as you were walking, um, you would step on them with your sandal. They'd go, they'd pop when, when you'd step on them. So they were just all over the place. So, so we, uh, but, but no problem. Our kids were excited just to, just to play in the sand. So while they were playing in the sand, Tosh and I were just kind of relaxing and, and, and chatting. And, and my daughter, she said, hey, can, can daddy, can you go and get us some water for our, in our buckets so we can build some sandcastles? So, so being a good dad, I I grab a bucket and, and I walk out into the water. But the problem is the tide was really far out. So I'm walking and I'm walking and the water's way out there. I'm walking and right when I get to the water, uh, what do you think happens? The tide comes in, right? The water starts coming in. And so, so what it was at my feet, now it's up to my waist. And I'm kind of doing the, you ever do the, the water run where you're trying to run in the water and you're lifting your legs high? And so I'm looking like a total, uh, like a total goofball, right? So, so I'm walking in and I, and I get the bucket of water and I've got that. And all of a sudden I feel this sting, this, this pain on my foot. And I look down and yep, a jellyfish, boom, right on my foot 
foot. Stings me on my toe, and it hurts so bad that I have the bucket of water, so I'm trying to walk in with the bucket of water, the pain in my foot, and I, and I walk to the beach, I put it down, and Tosh is like, what happened? And I'm like, I think I got stung by a jellyfish. I've, I've never had that before. It hurt so bad. I was like, wow. And I mean, what do you do when you get bit by a jellyfish? You know, I, I've never had that happen. I mean, um, the only thing I could think of, someone told me you're supposed to pee on the jelly on, on it. All right. So I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. All right. I'm not going to do that. But, uh, but I just sat down and man, it hurt so bad. And, and, um, and, and we just sat there and, and about a half hour later, I mean, the sting was only, only this big. We could see the little bit of poison on my, uh, on my foot. But about a half hour later, all of a sudden, my whole left leg started to hurt super bad. I mean, all the way up my leg, I was like, wow. For like 45 minutes, I couldn't move my leg. We're saying, do we go to the hospital? What do we do with all this pain? Do we just kind of live with it? So for 45 minutes, I just sat there like, oh, man, this kills. And then finally, the pain went away. So it was one of, the, one of the toughest experiences or painful experiences I've ever had. I hope you never get bit or stung by a jellyfish. But later Later that night, Tosh and I were sitting, uh, sitting at this, uh, sitting on the beach, and, and the stars were out, and we were kind of just kind of having one of those moments where we we're just talking about our life and our future and, and what God's wanting to do in us and through us. And I, and I said something to Tasha. I said, Tasha, man, I love what we do. Like, I just love what we do here in Joke Church. I mean, I, I, mean, I love it. I love, I love the IEC. I love Chi Alpha. I love English worship. I love seeing the Lord work inside each and every one of you. I just, I just love it. There's, there's nothing else that I want to do with my life. And, and, and it, it's what gets me up in the morning and what makes me reply to SMSs late at night. But there's this sense or this, this knowledge within me, inside of me, that, that I can't do this on my own, that, that I'm inadequate. I don't have the skills or the talent to succeed. I, I can't do this on my own. It, it, it must be God. It, it's got to be God. I need the power of the Holy Spirit at work in my life. You see, the Holy Spirit doesn't make me better than anyone else. The Holy Spirit makes me better than me. Let me say that again, right? That was a good one, right? You can do the, the heart sign or, you know, the, the double hands. Whoop, whoop. All right, so the Holy Spirit doesn't make me better than anyone else. The Holy Spirit makes me better than myself, better than what I can be on my own. Here's what the scriptures say in Zechariah 4.6. Zechariah 4.6 says this, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Years ago in 2010, the Lord put a vision in my heart for Jokcha. And do you know what I did when I got that vision? I wrote it down, right? You remember that, that point from a couple weeks ago? Get a vision, write it down. Get a vision, write it down. So in 2010, 10 years ago, man, I felt like God spoke something, something to my heart. So what did I do? I wrote it down. And here's the vision. I saw a map of Indonesia. And I saw a map of America, the United States. And I saw this bridge built between America and Indonesia. And, and I saw a, a, a bunch of American young people crossing that bridge and coming to Indonesia. And I felt like the Lord said to me, Jamie, I want you to build something that will help connect American young people to Indonesian young people. Man, when I saw that vision, when I heard God speak that to my heart, I knew I couldn't fulfill that vision on my own. I knew that Tosh and I knew that we needed a team of people to make that work. So we began to pray and prepare to be team leaders here in Jokja. Well, two years later, I was in America. And I was preaching at a Chi Alpha at Northern Arizona University, sharing my heart and my vision for Indonesia. And after the service, a sixth semester student approached me and said, and, and asked, could, could I come work with you and Tasha in Indonesia? And I remember thinking, wow, she's got a really long last name. All right, you know, I was just like, wow, that's a really long last name. But this was the beginning of the Lord fulfilling his vision that he put in my heart years before. And one year later, on August 28th, 
2013, Lauren arrived in Indonesia for a one-year commitment. But that one year led to another year that led to another year and another year. And for the last seven years, she has served faithfully and fruitfully in the ministry. The Lord, but now, after seven years, the Lord is calling her back home to America. And we want to bless her tonight. If you didn't know, this is Lauren's uh, uh, final night with us. Seven years ago, she arrived, uh, arrived here in Jokja before there was a Chi Alpha. There was no IEC. We didn't have English worship. I, I, think, uh, I think that's what, what's making this transition so difficult for Tosh and I, is that, that Lauren really represents the first fruit of the promise the Lord gave us all those years ago. She was the first team member to come and serve alongside of us. But over the last seven years, I've watched Lauren grow into a powerful minister of the gospel. And here are three lessons that I've learned from Lauren. I want to share just really quickly three lessons that I've learned from Lauren. Number one, passion for prayer. Number one, passion for prayer. When Lauren first arrived here, Tosh and I were so excited. The Lord had finally sent us our first teammate. Now what? Right? You know, like, have you ever had that where you were praying, you were praying, and all of a sudden God answers your prayer, and you're like, okay, now what do I do? You know, I already answered my prayer. And that's how we felt. He, he finally answered our prayer, but we didn't have a, really a plan or a strategy of what to do with her. With her. So we sent her with uh, Ibu Esvi, with Esvi, to Tarunga Bangsa to help teach English to the children there until we could figure out what to do. And I can remember, after about two weeks of her teaching English to elementary kids, she came to to me and, and we were doing kind of a review and, and she said, hey, uh, hey, can I change my schedule a little, my, uh, my schedule a little bit? And I said, absolutely. What, what, what do you want to do? And she goes, well, um, I'm only able to pray for like one hour a day and I'd like to be able to pray for two hours a day. And I was like, yes, you know, of course we can change your schedule. I, you want to pray? Of course you can pray. And, and in that moment, I learned something about Lauren that, that I've seen in her the last seven years. Lauren understood how the kingdom of God works, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Any success that she's had in life or ministry has come from spending time with the Lord. Romans 8, 26 says, In the same way, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness. For when we don't know how to pray or how we should pray, the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And now as Lauren leaves to go back to America, I want to say, who's willing to spend time in prayer like she did? That's one of the lessons I've learned from Lauren. Number two, lessons I've learned from Lauren is this, to pursue people. Pursue people. One of my favorite stories uh, about Lauren is the impact uh, uh, that, that she had on Rachel's life. You're going to hear that testimony of, of how Lauren just pursued her and, and just wouldn't give up on her and kept SMSing her and inviting her to Chi Alpha. And now, seven years later, Rachel serves on staff here at Chi Alpha. She's the national Chi Alpha coordinator, full-time in ministry, studying theology. And, and, and for the past seven years, anytime. I met someone new, I contacted Lauren to follow up on her because I knew that Lauren would follow up and pursue that person. John 15 says this, this is my commandment, love each other in the same way I've loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. And this is exactly what I've learned from Lauren with her follow-up, her SMS, her meetings, you being late for those meetings, you canceling on those meetings. She always, she always valued your life and your time. She was willing to lay down her life and her time so that you could succeed. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. 
So when she leaves, I have to ask, man, who's going to step into that place of ministry to say, I'm going to find, I'm going to feed, I'm going to fight for others and never quit on a relationship. It's a lesson I've learned from Lauren. The third lesson I've learned from Lauren is this primary purpose, primary purpose. You see, if I've always struggled with this concept of what we, what we call friendship evangelism, I mean, the idea that you have to be friends with someone before you, uh, and you got to be friends with them, you have to get to know them first, earn their trust, and then eventually share Jesus with them. All right? I've, I've struggled with that concept and because I think of it this way. When you become friends with Jamie, you get Jesus too, right? You know, like, it's like, you don't get Jamie now as your friend and then you meet Jesus later. No, no, um, it, it's when you get, when you become friends with Jamie, you get Jesus also. It's a, it's a two for one deal. With Jamie comes Jesus. And, and this is what I've seen even in Lauren's life. Ephesians 5, 15 says this. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but, but, uh, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. And this is exactly what I've learned from Lauren. She's always made the most of every opportunity, every relationship, whether it was playing a game, going to the beach, or even teaching English. She always looked for every opportunity to share her faith and her love for Jesus with you and with others. If you already knew Jesus, she invited you to study the scriptures. If you don't know Jesus, she'd invite you to study the scriptures with her anyway. It didn't matter where you were on your spiritual journey of faith with Lauren, you were always going to get Jesus. It was always going to be a two for one deal. And when she leaves, who will be the one to look for every opportunity to share their faith? Who will live with primary purpose? Three lessons I've learned from Lauren are passionate prayer, pursue people, and primary purpose. Lauren, you will be missed, but you've taught us all some valuable lessons about faith. So, so good with 
traveled with Tasha and I literally all around Indonesia and many parts of Asia. I think I've heard her testimony more than anyone else's, maybe even more than my testimony. And sometimes I even get her testimony confused with mine. I think, is that mine or her testimony? And, and if you've heard her tell her story, you know that when she was a teenager, man, she was See, she was super shy. She had, she had faith in Jesus, but, but she was too shy to share it with others. Then at university, she read this verse that changed her life. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but a power, love, and self-discipline. When she read this, she began to act on it. She began to pray and say, I don't have a spirit of shyness, but I have a spirit of power, love, and strong mind. And instead of being passive with her faith, she memorized this verse and began to apply it to her life. She doesn't have a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, love, self-discipline. She began to step out in faith and invite friends to Chi Alpha, to core group, to church. Get this, she would even knock on the door of people in her coast, in her dorm, and invite them to her Bible study. Can you imagine doing that at your dorm, in your coast, knocking, say, hey, I'm having a Bible study. You want to join us? That's what she did, so brawny, right? So brave. And during her time at university, she applied God's word to her life. She was transformed from a passive Christian to an active disciple. How did that happen? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Man, when Lauren leaves this next Friday, there's going to be an opportunity for you to step into that anointing 
and into that ministry. And I'm wondering, what's the Lord speaking to you? To be a person of prayer, to have that passionate prayer? Do you need to pursue people and get involved more in people's lives? And, or do you just need to live with more purpose and looking for more opportunities to share your faith? Man, as we sing, I just want you to take a few moments and ask the Lord, what are you speaking to me? Man, do I need to increase my prayer time? Do I need to pursue relationships? Do I need to live with more purpose? And let's just take a moment and ask the Lord, what do we need to do? for you today. I mean, if you're feeling passive or shy when it comes to your faith, I want to pray for you. Not by might, not by power, but by His Spirit does this thing happen in your life. So wherever you are with friends, at a watch party, if you're, with, if you're on your own in your dorm or at your house, just go ahead and lift your hands. And I want to just pray God's blessing over you, that God would give you the, 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 the power of the Holy Spirit to activate, to, to, to be a person of prayer. Go ahead and lift your hands and say, God, I want to be a, a person of prayer. I want to pursue people. I want to live with primary purpose. God, I pray for each person, uh, wherever they are, that, that they would do that, that they'd be a person of prayer. Help them, God, to be passionate about your things and your kingdom. God, help us to pursue people that we'd be about building relationships with others. And more than anything, to live with primary purpose. That your kingdom, that we'd share our faith with others. God, give us the, the strength to live with courage. To not have a spirit of fear or timidity, but a spirit of power, love, and strong mind. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. Grant us that now, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Passionate prayer, pursue people, primary purpose. But for some of you, and you've never even put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The scriptures make it really clear that, that we've all sinned and fallen short of God's standard. We've chosen our way 
instead of God's way. Because of this, the penalty is death. But Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross and his resurrection paid the penalty for you and for me. And all we have to do is believe and receive to know that we're saved, to receive new life and eternity in heaven. You can trust him. Have you made a decision to follow Jesus with your life? Here at English Worship, we like to say it's as easy as A, B, C. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe in Jesus and commit to following with your life. And if you do so, you will be saved. Barang siapa yang bersuruh kepada Tuhan Yesus akan diselamatkan. If you're ready, would you say this prayer with me? Let's pray. Father in heaven, forgive me for my sins. Make me brand new. I believe Jesus died for me and rose again so I could live for you. Fill me with your spirit so I could follow you for the rest of my life. Thank you for new life. Today I give you mine. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Man, if you said that prayer for the prayer that the Bible says that there's a celebration in heaven, that, that when, there's a celebration when anyone takes a step, a, a new step of faith in believing in Jesus. And we'd like to talk with you and pray with you about this decision to follow Jesus. So, so direct message us or, or, or hit the live prayer button so we, me or another staff member can talk with you and pray with you. So as we sing this song now, if you need someone to pray with, this is your time to respond. If you need someone to pray with you uh, uh, about being, uh, uh, about passionate prayer, if you need someone to, to talk with about pursuing relationships, pursuing people, or you need someone to, to say, hey, I want to, I want to be more brawny, I want to be more bold in sharing my faith. As we sing this song, I want you to direct message us or let us pray with you during this time as we lift our voices and sing. There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me oh. There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me incredible seven years of serving in Indonesia with you. And I pray now, I'm excited about this next step of faith for you. I'm grateful for the investment you've made in my life and in others to be passionate about prayer, to pursue people and live with primary purpose. So now, as we say see you later, I want to pray a blessing on you and all of us here at English Worship. Would you all lift your hands to receive the blessing of God? Father in heaven, you have blessed us with friendships and relationships. 
For seven years, Lauren has been a godly example to us of, of, in, so, in prayer and relationship and in, in, in sharing faith, God. How she's laid down her life and her time so that we could succeed. God, we receive now her blessing and your blessing that she's invested in us. And now we want to honor that, God, and live with the power of the Holy Spirit working through us, God, that we can't do it on our own, not by might, not by power, but by your Spirit. And I pray that blessing on everyone here, God, that we do not have a spirit of fear or timidity, but a spirit of power, love, and strength self-discipline this week as we go about living out our faith. Bless them now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everyone says together, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord, for seven years of service. God bless you all. Let's have a great week together. God bless. See you later. Wow, what an amazing and special time we've had together. Lauren, thank you so much for what you've done these past seven years for our community. And you still have time to let her know just how much she's meant to you, what she's done in your life. So send her an encouraging note, a DM, something that lets her know that we are excited for her as she goes into this next season. We also just want to say thank you again for being generous that you are still giving, that you are still bringing glory to the Lord um, through your tithes and offerings. And again, if you would like to give, you can do so at Mandiri and Beitea. Now, these past couple of weeks, we have been emphasizing one thing, get a job and find a friend. But we're taking it one step further. We're having a party, woo! Actually, you're having a party. We want to challenge you to find a couple of friends and watch Away Online together. It could be at your coast, in a house, in a park, in a coffee shop, anywhere that there's Wi-Fi, you can have an Away party because we value community. So we want to stay in community even when we're apart. We can't wait to see all of these parties pop up all around Jogja and Indonesia as we come together and celebrate what God is doing here at Away Online. So thank you for joining us today. We love you. See you next week.